Okay, so this is a stabilized gimbal system. Uh, it's being developed for CUAIR, Cornell University's unmanned air systems. Uh, CUAIR develops an autonomous reconnaissance aircraft, and this is going to be used to stabilize the onboard camera system. So what you see here is a two-axis gimbal. It's a roll-pitch gimbal. It uses service to actuate in each axis, and then that's controlled by this gimbal control board. Um, there's optical isolation for the servo outputs, uh, voltage regulation, and then it has an onboard IMU and a GPS header. And you, you, you fab this board? Yes, uh, right. so this was designed, um, fabricated, and then we used reflow soldering to assemble it. Okay, and, so, and, this is, and this is part of the team. Are you part of the team also? Yes, I am. Okay, so I, this... I'm not part of the project team. I only worked with Phil on it. I'm sorry, I, mean, I meant part of the CU Air team. No. Okay, so, you, so you're doing this as the class project. But yes. do, okay, all right, yes. fine. And, uh, and so you, 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 you fabbed this board, you laid it out and fabbed it, and then you wrote a user interface for yep. this also for, for testing and for, and right. for uh, calibration. Yep, so what you see here is you'll see the, uh, the microcontroller logical time, you'll see uh, the GPS isn't, now we're not outside, but it would show the GPS data here, and then it sh shows the data coming off the IMU and the computed roll and pitch okay. values. All right. um, and then through this you can also control the settings, command servo values. So if you, if you click in this little square down here, then when you click you're actually commanding the servo to, to move to different positions. Yeah. And then if I convert so if I set a position and then switch to stabilization mode, when I pick up the board, it starts rotating with the board. So and because on the aircraft, these of course would be in the same, in the same relative location. Yeah. The same relative orientation. Right. So when the board would bank, let's say to the right, the the gimbal system will roll to the left and compensate for that so that the camera stays pointed on target. Right. And then so if I rotate the other way and then up. Rotates it. Yep. Rot okay. Rotates that axis. Mm -hmm. And then left and right. Cool. All right. So uh, um, th it's a really pretty uh, <laughs> fab there. It looks like you know, somebody went wild with a laser cutter. Yep. And uh, but ultimately. What would the parts be in the aircraft? Would they be wood, or would they be uh, aluminum, or what would they be? So that actually depends on which camera we're flying with. So uh -huh. we have a gimbal system, which is uh, so this is laser jet. Uh, sorry, laser cut. We also have water jet cut um, aluminum, uh, which we use for heavier cameras. We're switching to a new camera that is going to be extremely lightweight um, and just as high performance. And so that's what this new one's designed. This is actually just to be super lightweight. Okay. All right. So, okay. The, the electronic gimbal here can be used with all of them, right? Yeah. Right. So the, so the servos don't have to change or the, or, the, or the control software? Well, the control software doesn't have to change at all. Um, the only thing that has to change is which servos, but they use the same pin header and control signal. Okay. And so now we're going to head outside and look at the GPS function? Yep. Okay. So, okay. so now you have lock. So you're... <coughs> Uh, we're inside because there's snow outside. <laughs> you're holding the GPS up to the window here, yep. and it's got a a lock with the. Yeah, so if you see here, um, so our latitude and longitude is certainly correct. There goes my battery. And there goes your battery. But I saw the latitude and longitude. <laughs> yep. Okay. So it's it must be real. It's on video. Yep. <laughs> okay. Thank you.